Good morning, folks. Quick shared article sourced from the University of Washington. After you read this, also consider planetary magnetosphere strength and how that relates to the very narrow Goldilocks zone with which this observer disagrees. Here's the latest drought look. To fully understand this aspect of climate extremes, however, it's useful to understand the crop moisture numbers, how they relate to the division-specific drought severity. Soil moisture often looks different than the crop moisture. Compare all to the standardized precipitation index. Links are all here on drought.gov, including first time seeing the full North American drought map. It has been a hot one in the U.S., pretty undoubtedly the hottest week of the year so far. And while that is absolutely true, we've broken more cold records in the past seven days, and even with exceptional drought, the rain records trump them all. Shifting to weather where there is the tiniest of tropic watches in the Gulf of Mexico, that major storm in southern Australia is taking parting shots at the southeast with its shift to New Zealand already underway. In Europe, the rain is expected to come down where it's been coming down, and same with the thunderstorms. They got a little bit of a rough go of it in northeastern Espana. U.S. pressure map not revealing the low pressure cell way north of the border. Zooming out a bit to reveal the breadth of that low pressure influence with a convergence tail swinging southwest, visible on the wind map, and ready to bring more severe weather this evening. Solar flares? Yet another example of why myself, the NSO, and NASA are discussing the little next ice age that Theodore Landscheit managed to predict a long time ago. Ignore us if you want. The southern sunspots look even worse than they did yesterday. Up north, that leviathan has sustained physical form while facing Earth, but has not yet managed to create much magnetic instability between umbras. The Earth-facing quiet that has just followed our planet for nearly two full trips around the sun presents as limb-favored CMEs, decaying active regions, or, like this one, a large Zurich class with virtually no flaring. Solar wind from ACE, revealing little more than constantly speedy particles. So using SOHO for three-day data, we see the front-leading density spike out ahead of the faster particles of the coronal hole stream, emanating from that dark beast up in the northern polar region. Remember that the KP index disturbance meets the density wave, not the speedier particles, and we need more density for disturbance. The umbral opening appears closing off to the Earth, and while it appeared that a transequatorial bit of the red existed, it's impossible to discern any relationship to that dark beast up north. The lone candidate is definitely the plasma filament I've identified for the last two broadcasts. Zooming in to find the lower level umbral fields revealing the issue. There was no coronal hole transequatorial right there. This shows why every level of the umbral fields and the visual coronal hole conformation is important. Now we do have the next one coming in, this time definitely visible on the AIA and through the lower and upper umbral fields in green there. Last watch saw only one 36 hour uptick without much destruction. Such a correlation is the type we like. Focus is on the northern active region and the southern plasma filament below it, both facing Earth today, and then that dark coronal hole on the equator behind them. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.50 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.